All right, hello, my good friends. Let me welcome you today with a good old fashioned trader hug. Like, bring it in nice and tight for all my good trader friends out there. Doug here with Trade with Doug. We got a great video today because I'm going retro, I'm going old school, blast from the past. I'm bringing back the legendary whiteboard Wednesdays with a twist, of course, since we're all up in the metaverse and technology is taking control of our lives. I'm going to go digital. I'm going to try to write with a pen on the screen. Now, you know what? You may not like that. You may say, dude, I want you to go down to Walmart or Office Depot today. I want you to get a cheap old whiteboard, a couple dry erase markers, put that black shirt back on and start drawing. If that's what you want me to do, guys, I'll do it. So just kind of comment. Let me know what you got going on. Let me know if you like me to go back to the old school ones or if you're cool with the digital. If it's your first time coming by this channel, you want to know what the hell's Whiteboard Wednesday. This is where we take a deeper look at what it takes to be a professional trader. The fundamental components, whether it's psychologically related, trade related, things that really make a difference in our survival and then ultimate our thriving in the trading business. So today we're going to talk about trying your best to time tops and bottoms in markets. When is the right time to step in and buy something that has been a disaster? Now we touched on a little bit of this in the market butterings. There were clues and signs that we saw last week that told us that the market was probably going to bounce. There were clues that were coming that told us that the market was probably going to sell off in November. And it wasn't just clues with the Fed or some kind of fundamental basis. It was all price action and it was all price related. And that's what we want to talk about because for me, charts are everything. All known relevant information about a company is reflected in its chart. Either somebody wants to buy it or somebody wants to sell it. It's simple as that. And we're going to talk about this today because we had a great trade with Facebook. And while I'm on that, guys, also a nice little short today in MITQ. Remember, the penny pound is now open. It's where I share my micro cap and small cap trades, both short, both swing longs. If that's something you're interested in, it's completely free. I'm doing it for free. The link is down in the description box. And we're going to talk about this Facebook trade that we got today because it mirrors a lot what we did last week with Netflix. And it's, of course, happening here with Facebook, because here's what happens normally for a lot of traders, especially new ones that aren't really using charts. When you see something like Facebook, a big beta, a, a fang name, a really popular stock with good earnings, a solid reputation, the moment it drops, a lot of people just blindly buy that. And just because it's a good company does not mean that every time it drops, you need to be standing there buying up everything. Now, I know as soon as this thing was going, it's been going down since September consistently, but I know as soon as they had bad earnings, everybody wakes up, sees this 25% down. They say, I'm going to buy this. Now, if your time horizon's a decade from now, okay, well, that's fine. But if you're a short-term trader trying to make money, just because a good company is down doesn't mean they can't go down further. I mean, we have no idea where it could end up. We have no idea how bad it may end up getting. Just because it's good, remember, it doesn't mean it has to bounce. The price will tell us when it needs to bounce, not the fundamentals, the price. So what we were looking for here in Facebook was the same thing that we were looking for in Netflix. If you look at the trend, the shorter term trend since September, it's definitely bearish. No question, it's been going down. It's been making a series of lower highs the whole time and then fresh new lows. And that brings me to after earnings. As soon as this thing dropped, I'm sure there were a lot of people trying to dip by this just for the sake that it was down. But it never gave you chart wise a legitimate entry for any trade whatsoever, especially if you were a short term trader, because there are a couple of things that this thing was doing that was continuing to confirm its bearish bias and thesis. If you take a look at the day right here when it gapped down on earnings, normally when that happens, it's best to just get away from it. That day it's trading is highly emotional charged. And when emotions come into play, it really skews your accuracy when it comes to technical analysis. Now what happens the next day is Facebook starts to bounce. You can take a look at it right here. It actually starts to rally. This is a sucker's rally. And how you can tell is no rally is consistent or no rally has the, the odds of continuing unless it can do something valuable. 
and that is make a fresh high and make another new high and take out some sort of level of importance. So when I say level of importance, the highs from this day, the earnings day, and the lows, these become your two nearest pivot points to be paying attention to. So if Facebook trades above this two, let's say this is 248, I think it is. Don't quote me to, to the penny. And then you've got like 232 or something to the downside. Now there may be intraday scalps, that's different. But if you're looking at building a swing or trying to catch a consistent move, it doesn't become bullish or it doesn't have momentum bullish or become what we call an authentic, I know it's not a right word, Authentic, uh, whatever, authentic breakout. That's what I was looking for, authentic breakout until it crosses 248. It has to have some sort of a range break, but that's not what happens. Actually, what happens is the reverse is it makes a new low. Then on the third day, it does the same thing. Rather than making a new high or taking out the previous day, it just takes out the previous low. So what you're having in this stock is for the first few days, it's always making new daily lows every day it is taking out the previous day's low so if you if you just want to buy it and you want to do this as simple as possible there's no buy on this stock there's no legit buy until you stop making new lows so the first thing that you're looking for is don't don't worry about the fundamentals of the company right now or the fact that they should be higher they should be lower based on your own mental bias what you should really be looking at is when are you going to stop making new lows? Because maybe you turn into a Roku or something and you go down 50 to 60%. We don't know how far it can go. So the first thing you have to do is stop making new lows. That's step one. No fresh lows. I'm going to just put no lows, right? The next thing that you need to aid that is you have to see some kind of buying some kind of stop to those new lows some sort of washout where where sellers become fatigued where the worst or the storm is over and there's normally two signals that you look for one is a inside day i'm just going to put inside because i'm trying to draw this with a mouse which is silly you have an inside day and then you have a new high and sometimes they happen together or sometimes one happens and then the other happens. In Facebook's case, whether it was NASDAQ related today, what you got was, we'll focus on yesterday's action. A nice little, if you wanna call this doji cross, doji star or whatever. This was sort of a stopping point where it started to slow its pace down. But the key to, was today where, let me erase this for a second here cause I got a big old mess, okay. The key was today was taking out, right here, taking out the previous day's high. Now look at the move. Since it took out the previous day's high, this was like a 2, uh, 226, it's just immediately went straight to 232. So this is the biggest, most consistent, strongest bounce this has had in four days. Is it? irony or is it technical right is it just a coincidence or is it the fact that it actually stopped something in that bearish cycle so when you're looking at that bearish cycle you have two things that you really need to stop those bearish behaviors one is stop making fresh lows and the second is try to make some other highs because there's two parts of that equation that we often forget just because something stops selling doesn't mean that it's done in the longer term, right? It doesn't mean it's ready to bounce either. So your first step when you're looking at charts is if you're doing reversals like this, is where do you stop buying? And the next is do you see the participation? Do you see people stepping in to buy that? Now today this happened on a shorter time frame where you look at the one hour and you saw that every dip intraday was getting bought. And all it needed to do was continue to hold those dips. So for the first time, I mean, look back here, you've had maybe one little spot of a brief dip, then it makes a new low, 
a little parabolic, quickly a new low. This was the first time you had a string of consistency after that sell-off. And that was the sign that you're looking for. So in a really quick review here, you're looking for that bearish tone to stop. Now, if it's an inside day, which I thought it could be, because today maybe, maybe it did get a little bump from the NASDAQ. An inside day, for those that don't know, would be something that trades inside of the previous range. So let's say this is the top, this is the high. If it would have just traded inside of here today, that could have been a good signal for us for a trade tomorrow, that if it were to break that high and get through the previous day's high, if that makes sense. So when you're doing reversals, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for number one, whether it's a bullish stock that's going parabolic or a bearish stock that's dumping, you're looking for some spot where that bearish tone of fresh lows, instant rallies being stuffed and sold quickly, you're looking for those type of behaviors to stop first and foremost. Now, as you get more advanced, there's normally an area they bounce based off of support. There's always an area where they find support based on a past area of a chart, but this is not a support and resistance demonstration today. This is about changing tempos and tones. Those are what you want to look for or an inside day, something to show you that selling has been exhausted or buying has been exhausted if you're trying to reverse it. Then the next step, you still need participation because the shares that you and I buy are not going to propel this to all-time highs with our measly 50 shares, 100 shares, 200 shares, even 1,000. It's not going to move the needle on Facebook. We're going to need to see enthusiasm throughout the day, constant dip buying, rallies holding and not being sold off. Again, not so much chart pattern related as it is looking at the tempo of the market behaviors in the past that are changing sort of like when you change your behaviors you were doing something bad then you started doing something good and your life improved and that's what we're looking for so guys i hope this helped you i hope i didn't get too ranty there towards the end and kind of confuse you just remember there's some great money to be made in stuff in all of these stocks that get oversold or overbought but it's important that you wait for the proper signals to get into them even if you are investing always trying to get the best possible price or get your timing as close to perfect as possible because it never will be perfect, but getting as close to perfect as possible will not only make you more money, but it will save you a bunch of emotional hardship. And I think sometimes we overlook that emotional capital and emotional hardship. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. Take care, trade well. These are just my opinions and my opinions may be wrong. See you soon.